Hey guys, MEP guy here. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create this plumbing cover sheet. Now in this video, we're going to go over how to add general note text. We're going to go over how to add a plumbing fixture schedule. We're going to go over how to create a plumbing symbols legend view. We're going to also create a pipe accessory schedule. That's like a dummy schedule. And lastly, we're going to go over how to create a little sheet list. So, for this video, I really want to give you guys the tools that you'll need to basically create anything you want for your cover sheets. And I'm just going to show you a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. And the next thing we might want to do is we might want to include our plumbing fixture schedule on this sheet. So luckily, since we've already copied in the fixtures from our template, we can also copy in a plumbing fixture schedule from the template as well. So let's go to our template file. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sheet with the schedule on it. So right here, I have some sheets, this P001. So we'll double click on that. And you can see I have this schedule here. I'm going to click it, copy it to the clipboard, and then I'm going to go to my cover sheet and I'm simply going to paste it in. So we'll go to modify paste from clipboard. We'll hit okay. And we'll just paste it in right here for now. Or well, maybe we'll paste it down here so it fits. And as you can see, it's going to automatically create this schedule based on all the fixtures that we have in this project. Now, some of you might not want to include the fixture unit values so we can modify this schedule. I'm going to double click on it and now we can go ahead and modify it. One thing I might want to do is I might want to add the shower type so I could quickly add that here. So I created this new shower public type. And you can use this column for anything. And we might want to remove these columns. So let's go to our fields category right here and we'll hit edit. And if we want to remove it, we'll select it and click this red arrow. We'll click it again and click it one more time. And now we've removed those columns. We'll hit OK. And now they're gone. And maybe we don't want to include the type. So we'll go to fields and we'll just remove the type because we don't really need to include that information. It's not that important. And so right now we have the type mark, we have the description, and we have the manufacturer. We could add any information here. So for all these, I'm just going to call it manufacturer because I don't know the manufacturer that I'm going to use. And once you update one, you can use the drop down and just select it each time. And so if I had the same manufacturer for multiple ones, I could just click this button and quickly add them just like that. So we'll do the last one here. That looks great. And then for model number, we'll do the same thing. So I'm just going to start with model number, hit OK. And we can add the model number to all of these. And if I actually had the model number, I might want to add some information like this. That looks great. And so we're just adding the model number information. If we had the same model for something, we would just use our little drop down thing. And that's looking pretty good. Let's keep going to the right. Now I have some general comments here that you guys might want to use. And so just make sure you check these and, you know, add any type comments that you want. Now the type comments, I'll show you guys how to get to those. If we go to maybe our P100 sheet and let's just zoom in, let's actually open up a riser. So I'm going to go to the domestic water isometric. And if we wanted to update the type comments for maybe the lavatories. I'm going to double click into this view. I'm going to click on my lavatory fixture. I'm going to go to edit type and we'll scroll down and you can see the type comments are actually located within this fixture. So if we click here, this is where we're editing our, our comments that are getting picked up by that schedule. So for instance, if I wanted to change it to maybe 1.2 GPM, I could do it right here. 1.2 hit enter and hit OK. And remember, a type comment is for all of the types, and that's why we're using the type comment for this. So if we go back to our plumbing fixture schedule, you can see that I've made that change to the type comments right here for our lavatories. Now they're 1.2 GPM. If I undo that change, we'll click undo one more time. It changes it back to 0.5 GPM. And if I went back to my domestic water isometric and I clicked on my fixture, went to edit type, you can see it went back to 0.5 GPM. So I just wanted to explain where the 
schedule is pulling the information from is actually pulling it from your fixtures. We're gonna hit okay. And let's go back to our P001 plumbing cover sheet. And we have this newly created plumbing fixture schedule. Let's go ahead and move it somewhere. Maybe we'll move it up here. Right there looks good. And if you want to customize the way this looks, we can double click into the schedule and maybe we'll do a side by side view so we can see how this is being displayed at the same time while we edit it. So we'll move that over here and then now we can see that. So I want to get rid of sheet display. So I'm going to go up here to my title. I'm just going to remove sheet display and hit enter. You can see that removes it from my sheet as well. And also if I wanted to modify the column titles, I could do that. So I can just click into them and maybe I want them all capitalized. So I'd have to modify them just like this. And you can see they're being updated on the sheet as well. If you want to make even further modifications, like maybe I want to remove some of the lines here, I can go to my appearance and we have a couple things we could do up here. We could remove grid lines, hit OK, and now the grid lines are gone. I tend to like to keep the, the grid lines on for this, so we'll go back to appearance and we'll keep those on. We'll click OK. And if we go one more time to appearance, we can also click on grid in headers, footer spaces, click OK. And then what it will do is it will create a grid line space right here. So I don't really like that. I'm going to undo that. And I think that looks a little nicer. So you guys can do whatever you would like for this to monitor to customize this. Let's go back to the schedule and then let's click on formatting and see what we can do there. And this allows us to make some modifications to the alignment of the text. So if we wanted it to be aligned to the left, so for instance, if description, we wanted it to be aligned to the left, we would just go to description here, click on it. And then you can see right here, the alignment is center but we could change that to left and hit okay. And now the description is aligned to the left, but I don't like that either. I'm gonna undo it. And so you can just make modifications based on what your company likes to do. Now it's very common to add additional general notes for the fixtures below the plumbing fixture schedule. So let's go ahead and just create a new text box below it. So I'm gonna go up to annotate text and we'll just try to make a text box about the same size as the schedule, maybe something like this. And let's zoom in here and we'll name this plumbing fixture notes. And so now we have this new notes. Now we might not want to make it that big. So let's make it an eighth of an inch. And if we click into the text box here, we can actually highlight it and create an underline right here. And so that way the first piece of text has been underlined and then we can hit enter and we can start a new numbered list. So we can go up here and hit numbered list. And maybe I want to say note one is right here, but I don't want this underlined. So I'd highlight that and click the underline button. And we have note number one, note two, note three. And so we could add additional information for all the plumbing fixtures. Another strategy you can use instead of using the type comments right here, because it's very challenging to add text into this box right here sometimes. So one thing that I, I think is kind of cool, let me drag this over so you guys can see this a little better, is we could add a new project parameter to all the plumbing fixtures and we could call it fixture notes or something like that. So let's do that. I'm gonna go up to manage project parameters. I'm gonna add a new project parameter. I'm gonna call it plumbing fixture notes. It's going to be a type and we're gonna assign it to plumbing fixtures. So we're gonna scroll down to P and click on plumbing fixtures right here. And this type of parameter is going to be a multi-line text family or parameter. And we're just gonna click okay. We're gonna click okay. And now we've created a new type parameter for all the plumbing fixtures. So let's go to our P1 and we'll click on the lavatory. And if we click on edit type now and we go down to the bottom or to the top, <laughs> you can see we have this new text field called plumbing fixture notes. And so we can use this new field that we created for our schedule. So I'm gonna click okay here 
And what the nice thing about doing something like this is, is if we go to our cover sheet and specifically the schedule, so let's make the schedule nice and large, and then we go all the way to the right, let's add in that new plumbing fixture parameter that we added to the project. So we'll go to fields, edit, we'll go down to plumbing fixture notes, we're going to click it and hit this green arrow, add parameter, and we'll put it at the very end and we'll click OK. And now you can see we have this newly created field over here. And I can't really see it, so I'm gonna drag this into the screen like this so you guys can see this. And let's make it full size. There we go. And I'm gonna hold Control and scroll away with my mouse wheel and you can see that the schedule gets smaller and I can also scroll in and the schedule gets bigger. So that's looking a little better. And what we can do is we can click on the ellipses right here and start adding in notes. Now, before I do that, I want to increase the column width of this. So I'm going to hold control again and zoom out with my mouse wheel. And then I'm just going to drag the plumbing fixture notes over. And I don't want to use the type comments anymore because they're really hard to edit. So let me give you guys an example of what I mean. If we try to start editing this text, it's, it's very challenging. So if I want to like go to ASSE 1070 and try to add text here, I can do it. And I can also click here. But you can see like it's not very user friendly. It's very kind of hard to work with sometimes. So what I might want to do is I might want to copy this text in here, hit control C. And I might want to use my newly created uh, column right here. So I'm going to click into this and we're going to click the little ellipses right here. And what that will do is it will pull up this new multi-line text box. And now I can easily edit within this box. And it just makes editing text a little easier and easy to work with. So I have all this ways I can edit. I can do different lines and stuff. Just stuff that we could not do before using the type comments parameter because it's just a text parameter. So I think that looks good. I want to hit OK and add that. We're going to click OK. And I want to get rid of the new or the old type comments column. So I'm going to go to fields and I'm going to click on type comments. We're going to remove this one. We're going to click OK. And now you have a newly created uh, multi-line text column for all of your plumbing fixtures that you can use to add in different or more information to each plumbing fixture. So I think this technique is very, very nice and a great way to do it. So let's go back to our cover sheet. And now we have this new text field that we can use to add additional information. And one more thing I want to show you guys. So let's actually get rid of this text up here. So let's go to, we'll double click onto our schedule and let's change the title up here. So I'm just going to change it to notes. And another technique you can use is we can do the same thing, but we're going to add a general note column so that we can refer to the general notes. So I'm going to go up to manage again. We're going to go up to project parameters. We're going to add a new one. We're going to go down to plumbing fixtures, select it. And we're going to call this one. We'll call it general note number. That's fine for now. And we're going to change it again to multi-line text is fine. Just makes it easier to work with. It's going to be a type. And I think that looks good. We're going to hit OK. And since I had the lavatory selected, it's asking me, do I want to make a change? We're just going to hit uh, cancel for now. We don't need to mess with it. So I'm going to hit OK on here. And let's add that new column to our schedule. So we'll go to fields, edit. We'll go to general note number and we'll add that to our plumbing fixture schedule. We'll click OK. And now all the way to the right, we have a new general note field and we can click on it. And we can maybe make this one comma two comma three. And that way we'll hit OK. And that way we can have additional general notes that apply to all of the lavatories. So this is another technique that I've seen companies use for basically general notes that apply to a bunch of the fixtures. And so instead of having to write it for each one of these fixtures, you can add a general note uh, column here and do it that way. So let's go back to our P001 sheet. And you can see that something messed up over here. So we might want to resize this. You can also resize the plumbing schedule here so I can resize it. And I'd want to make this a lot smaller. And so maybe let's just call this general notes. So we'll double click into our schedule. 
We'll go to the title up here and we'll just name this general notes, hit enter. We'll go back to our cover sheet right here and we could resize this maybe to something like this. Now we have that new general notes column and you can see it's saying refer to note one, two, and three. And then what we would do is we'd say, we could say laboratories are wall hung, provide concealed arm carriers, and refer to the architectural drawings for mounting height. Something like that would be good, I think. And so let's move our plumbing fixture notes. Maybe we'll new, move it to about right there. And that looks good. And so we might want to add additional, so refer to the architectural drawings for mounting height. We might want to also add that to additional fixtures. So maybe the urinal, we add that general note. So we would add it here. We could just go to double click on our fixture or our schedule. And I want to add it to the urinal. So I'm going to click on the urinal because it highlights it. And now I know to add note number three here. So I hit the ellipses because we made it multi-line text and we'll add number three here. I'll click OK. And you can see that it's going to add that to all of the urinals. That's fine. We're going to hit OK. And now we have general note number three being applied to the urinal. Let's go back to our cover sheet and note three is showing up right here. So those are a couple ways to do it. So I hope you've enjoyed this preview of my course, Plumbing 201 Construction Documentation, where I show how to create all of these sheets that I have up here, starting with this plumbing cover sheet, so we go over how to create these general notes, this pipe accessory schedule, this plumbing symbols legend, the plumbing fixture schedule that you guys kind of saw, and a sheet list right here. We also go over how to create this floor plan sheet. And I show you guys this technique where we're using callouts to help display the information in a part plan view like this. So this really helps when you're documenting so you can really see everything at maybe a larger scale than your overall plan. And so we go over all of these techniques right here. You'll also notice that I have some sections right here. So if I double click into this view and then we go to these sections, they're actually located on P105, which is right here. And you can see I have these plumbing section views that I've created and it just gives another view that has a little bit more information. So these are really cool to create and they're very, very simple to create and they really don't take that much time at all. We also show you how to create a floor plan based on your different system types. So right here we're displaying the domestic water system and I show a really cool technique where I cut up a floor plan kind of like a match line technique and right here you can see it's telling whoever's viewing the documents that you need to view detail number two on P101 because this is P101 and so here's detail number two. So you can see it's just a, another technique to split up your build, building if you don't have enough space on your sheet. We do the same thing with the sanitary and vent system. So I show you guys how to do that. And right here you can see we're using a fine level of detail. So you can see the pipe in a two line pipe. So we do the same technique up here. And we also go over how to show some riser or isometric drawings. And right here we're just displaying the domestic water system. And I also go over how to display the sanitary and vent system, which is a little bit more complex. And what you'll need to do is most of the time you'll need to break up your drawing. So I show a technique where we break up the drawing and you can see S1 denotes that it's going to continue at this location right here. So it's just a really good technique to use for Revit because a lot of times we don't have enough space to fit everything on our plans. And so I go over all of that in the course. And lastly, like we talked about, we have these nice section views that we create. So this is all in the course, Plumbing 201. And make sure to check out the link in the description to go to mepguy.com and check out the offers that I have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.